Hello and welcome to a new video about electrochromatics or how electrohydraulics does not really matter, I already mentioned, because the basic principle is the same. Well, today we want to discuss how we're going to select a proper valve for our application. Well, the most important thing a valve can do is work according to the desired function. Okay? So, the first thing I have to do, I select the type of valve according to the function. Yeah? This is really the first and basic step. Everything else is secondary. Yeah? So first select valve according function. I have already put here some possible functions. Yeah? Uh, well, if you want to just to cut off the stream, yeah, then a two-two way valve would be sufficient. Yeah, and here we see we said usually if these valves are pre-controlled, so that we don't have a coil which is that big. Yeah, we have a tiny coil switching a tiny valve. This tiny tiny valve is switching the big valve. So this is spring-loaded here, rest position locked, turn on, book flow. Okay, maybe this this part here down here. This is something which we you might don't know. This is a pneumatic spring. Yeah? So there is also pressure also applied on this side. So that whenever we have pressure, also from pneumatic side we are pressing in this position. Yeah? Not only the mechanical spring, but also a pneumatic cushioning spring. Yeah, pre-control. Cut off. If we want to turn something on and off, uh, then it might be beneficial that we make the rest of this uh, without pressure, uh, that we don't just cut off and 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 cut and and the pressure will then there be cut. Uh, uh, it will stay there. Uh, so we have to exhaust this pressure. Uh, then we're using a three-two way valve. Uh, we don't want to cut, uh, but we want to really the air, the system. The rest is the same. Single acting cylinders, we said 3 to way valve is sufficient. That I've used another type. You see the rest position is different. Here we have locked rest position, here we have flow rest position. Does not really matter how your function is necessary. Yeah? Then double acting cylinders, we said we are using 4 or 5 slash two way valves. Here I've drawn a four, uh, four two way valve. This is very usual in pneumatics with, uh, in, in hydraulics we have said. In pneumatics we usually five, we have five two way valves because simply they're cheaper to produce and I do and I can get rid of the air at the valve. Huh? Uh, we talked about this. Huh? If we need a stop in the middle somewhere, double acting cylinder with stop, yeah, then we would use something like this, yeah, four three way valve, so that we are, can move it one direction, move it the other direction, or stop it at a certain position. Sometimes it's necessary to to have, you know, it is not that easy to store electric energy. I think you know, yeah. Pressure energy is can easily be stored. We have these pressure accumulators and so on, so they will not simply be gone. Yeah? Electrical energy might be simply gone. Yeah? And then we need a special treatment for this case. We need to think about this, yeah? that this might happen, and we need to think about what should happen then. And we have if we have special needs, yeah? then the middle position, because if this and this is powerless, we are in middle position. Yeah? And if this cutoff is not good yeah, for this, then we might use something like this. Yeah? Uh, this, for instance, means both lines are without pressure. Yeah? Then we... it's pressureless. Yeah? Or this middle position would mean both lines are with pressure. Yeah? So we pressurize whatever is located there and we reach a certain position. Okay. So this fail-safe design 
you really have to think about what should happen if the electrical power is suddenly gone. Okay? And like I said, this, oh, I missed here, this exhaust air uh, on the pre control, I also draw everywhere a hand manual operation. Uh, because this is pretty usual that we can control the valves manually as well. Because, you know, during commissioning, yeah, when the control system is not ready yet, not ready wired and so on, and you want to check already the function, it is really nice if you can just press it a little. Okay, this is why these, these manual operations there are usually there. The hydraulic valves usually have to have a stick and move it. Yeah? And here it's even in, in pneumatic valves, it's usually built in somewhere with a small small button somewhere. Okay, so this is the first thing you do. We know the function, yeah? we select the according valve, yeah? then that's it. And then we open the catalog of a manufacturer of our choice. And then we realize, ah, this function comes with different form factors. There are single valves, there are things like this, that like that, yeah? so that there are a lot of valves located somewhere. Yeah? Uh, how to choose this? Well, of course, the data needs to fit. Okay. Second, check data. So, we do have things like, you know, uh, pressure, pressure range. Needs to fit the pressure, especially an hydraulic valve. Sir. If you have extraordinary high pressures, then you might run into troubles there. Yeah? Pressure range needs to fit. Then the flow rate. Yeah? Flow rate, how many liters per second can pass there? Yeah? And, and hydraulic valves also, also uh, you know, the pressure losses. This is mainly on hydraulic, hydraulic side. Yeah? These are things yeah, which needs to be considered, let's say. Yeah? Uh, switching times. The form factor. Form factor is already something which goes to... Now, this is mandatory. Correct pressure range, necessary flow time, and, and uh, pressure losses which fit. Uh, this is simply mandatory, we cannot work around this. Switching times is usually not that important, you know, if something switches in 30 milliseconds or 35 milliseconds, yeah, if it comes to security or safety, okay, yeah. maybe in this corner case this is important. Form factor is more of an issue, you know, usually people don't really care how things look like. Yeah? The thing which is really then the selection criteria is costs. All right? Because you for sure end up in a situation where you have several choices and then you need to determine the costs. Yeah? But do not only use the costs of the valve itself. Yeah? There is also installation. We have costs of the valve. Yeah? We have costs of installation. We have costs of maintenance. Main, main t maintenance. Ah, can nobody can read it? Maintenance. <laughs> yeah. This you have to really consider. Yeah. It's not just it's not just the valve. Yeah. It's just it's also the handling of the valve. And then you have 
the correct function, you have the necessary necessary requirements, you've met the rest of necessary requirements at the lowest possible cost. Who could blame you? Okay. And like I said, you really have to think about what is happening, what is happening at energy supply stop, uh, if electric energy fails. This we will then discuss in next video a little bit more in detail. Next video will not be too long, but we will discuss what is happening. We will think of different options here. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.